All right, guys, welcome to Chapter 3, Organic Compounds, which is all about carbs, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. So if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to try to do a video on each. I'm going to do a video on carbohydrates, a video on proteins, a video on lipids, and a video on nucleic acids, just to get you guys as much information as possible. Remember, um, I did modify your uh, uh, reading quizzes to be worth a little bit more, and your tests to be a little, worth a little bit less, because in our situation where, as you can see behind me, there ain't nobody here but me. I want to make sure I give you guys the fair uh, way to do it as best I possibly can. So if it's okay with you guys, let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with organic compounds. So remember, guys, I'm going to go a little faster through this. I hope this doesn't bother you too much. But when you guys do organic compounds, there's only one thing you guys need to know. Organic is... That's all you need for organic. If I contain carbon and hydrogen, I am... I'm organic. So here's the money question of the day. Is water organic? And the answer is no. The reason why it's no is because it doesn't contain carbon. So when you guys get to college, you guys will take an organic chemistry series if you go into science. And if you take the organic chemistry series, well, guess what? You're only going to take things that are carbon and hydrogen. So let's kind of scan through really quick what we're going to talk about. This right here is sugar. Is sugar organic? Yep. Okay, well, what about fats? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, my goodness. I have so many things I'm going to show you today. Here is fats. Is fats organic? Mm, kind of. They're kind of a big deal. So as you guys look at this, this whole chapter is based on organics. And so that's what we need to talk about the most. We need to talk about this organic chemistry part and how they contain carbon and hydrogen. Now, oxygen is usually with them, but that doesn't have to be the case. So I love it when I'm sitting there and someone's like, hey, this milk is organic. Almost everything in the world, if it has carbon hydrogen, is organic. So here we go. So we got uh, compounds contain carbon hydrogen, usually oxygen. We're okay with that. And we are going to start with the almighty carbohydrates. Now, there is going to be something I strongly suggest you guys do. But this is going to be me, not you. But I'm just telling you, it'll make your life a lot easier. So if you guys can make this chart for me, okay? If you can make this chart, your life will be a lot easier. So here's my chart. Woo! Okay. And what we're going to do is today we're just going to do carbohydrates. Okay, so here's carbs. Okay, and then we'll do another video for lipids and proteins and nucleic acids. That's supposed to be a P. Okay, all I want is the following. Okay, you have to have some information about each one of these, including its shape. I would know its shape so you know what it looks like. Okay, I would know the names. Give me the names of what they're called. Okay, then I would want to know its function. Why do I eat them? And then I would want to know some examples. Okay, give me some examples of each. Now, I'm going to go kind of fast through these. But it's your job to watch this video again if I go too fast or pause it and do whatever you need to. So this is my basic formula for sugar. Okay, I should have made those superscript. Okay, sugar is C6H12O6. Now, if you were in a math class, the math teacher would be like, how dare you? Because you did not reduce it. Oh, okay, that's your mean math teacher. You know you can reduce a 6, a 12, and a 6, and that can reduce down into C1H2O1, which we never write ones. So can I reduce this down to CH2O? So what is sugar really? Sugar is carbon in water. That's why we call them, erase all this mess, carbohydrates. They're carbon water. That's why we call them carbohydrates. So now if you look at sugars, this is one of the biggest things. We talked about this at the beginning of class, so you guys should recognize this. These are three different kinds of sugars. So if we scroll down to the bottom, sorry, you can't really see their names. You got glucose, fructose, and galactose. They look exactly the same to me. Like I can barely tell them apart. They look the same, especially glucose and galactose. So I mean, if you look at this one and you look at this one, they look exactly the same, but they're not. Because if you look really close, can you see how there's a hydrogen on this carbon and a hydroxyl on that carbon? And what happens you change your shape? Change everything in the world about you. So you can't do that. we got to make sure you understand that. What is the difference between glucose and galactose? Well, they're both C6H12O6. But if you change the shape, you change your function. Now, I wish that sugars lined up in a line like this because that would be easy to study. But they don't. They fold on themselves, and they fold into this ring-like structure. So that's something you're going to need to know in your chart. So this is a ring. 
So whenever you see this on the test, I would draw this in your chart. Okay, whenever you find a ring, that's generally going to be a carbohydrate. Now they can be a six-sided ring or a five-sided ring, but they can be different shapes. Now the first thing you're going to look at this is you're like, man, Bert, shouldn't there be 12 or six carbons here? I only see one. Well, in organic chemistry, every intersection that is not labeled is a carbon. So you actually look, there is actually six carbons on here. In fact, it gets even worse, where if I go to the next slide, you can see that they don't even label anything anymore. See, it just, it just kind of gets pretty basic in here. So when you guys see this, don't panic, okay? So this is my sugar. Now, if you notice, this is the second thing. This is glucose, galactose. Toast, okay, and down here is this ribose down here at the bottom. Sorry, these are the format is changing on my video. Fructose, fructose. That's one of the biggest things you need to know. Sugars tend to end in os. So if I say on the test, what's galaba 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 os? Well, that's a sugar. Okay, there's another name we use for sugars too. I'm hoping you guys recognize it. Maybe you don't. It's called sacker. Sacker's another name for a sugar. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture, and I hope it doesn't freak you out. This next picture is a bunch of monosaccharides. So you got glucose, fructose, ribose. There's a lot. Now let's talk about mono. You guys are going to hear these words a lot. You got mono. You got di. You got poly. Okay. Mono, one. Di, two. Poly, many. So now let's go ahead and do this. Monosaccher. These are one sugar that's what they are one sugar so what happens if i put two of these together well if i put a mono plus a mono then i get a disaccharide now this is actually one of the trickiest things you guys have to study in organic chemistry we can combine these guys together and if we do this is a process called dehydration this is a word you're going to be tested on so make sure you understand that one really good so here's a monosaccharide, one sugar. Here's a monosaccharide, one sugar. I know this is a five-sided ring. This is a six-sided ring. It doesn't matter, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them together. Now, if you look at this, you guys should recognize the word dehydration. Dehydrate, that means you're going to take fluid out, right? You're going to take water out. So as I get these guys closer and closer and closer together, they're getting closer and closer and closer, you can see what we're going to do. We're going to take the hydrogen off this sugar, okay, the OH off this sugar. We're going to peel them off together, and we're going to take water out of the equation. And so on the next slide, you can see I took water out. Whenever we do dehydration, we make a bond. Okay, star that a thousand times over. We make a bond. So now this is a disaccharide. Okay, a disaccharide is a fancy word of two sugars. That's what they are, okay? Now, there are a couple disaccharides I want you to know. So you guys know that glucose was a mono, one sugar. Fructose, mono. Galactose, mono. The two disaccharides I want you to know, you guys should recognize these guys. Let's start with this guy right here. Sucrose. Is that a sugar? Yes. How do you know that? It ends in os. Okay, you know that's a sugar. The second one I want you to know is this guy lactose now as soon as i say lactose you're like hey that's milk ah that's a sugar found in milk so guess what happens if you're lactose intolerant if you're lactose intolerant you drink this guy but you cannot break him so you struggle with lactose but remember dehydration is to make a bond so now let's talk about how i break a bond to break a bond i have to switch gears to what we call hydrolysis now it's not pronounced hydrolysis it's pronounced hydrolysis but i really like to pronounce it hydrolysis hydro is water and lysis is rip your face off okay i'm a med term teacher i can't say that but i want to it's to dissolve or destroy so guess what we're going to do if i want to break this bond i need to take water and I need to shove it in here to break this bond. And sadly, what am I going to do to water? I'm going to rip his face off. So this is almost the exact opposite of dehydration. So if we want to destroy sucrose, a disaccharide, okay, we try to put water in here. So here comes water. 
Okay, this is a bad diagram. Sorry, my formatting's a little off. But that's okay, because then what happens is we take our water, we shove it in here, and we put a hydrogen with this guy. We put a hydroxide with that guy. And then you break a disaccharide back into its monosaccharides, its monomers. And this is why we call it hydroliso. We ripped water in half. So now we get to these guys. Oh, mother goodness. Poly, poly, polysaccharides. That means holy cow, many sugars. Cellulose. Cellulose. You guys are like, man, that's a big sugar. You've heard of him before. Test question. Cellulose's name is fiber. Okay. So if you eat fiber, guess what? Fiber is a sugar. Okay. Starch. You're like, wait, Bert, this doesn't end in O's. It violates the rules. It does, but Starch's real name is amylose, which now it is in O's, and it is a sugar. I don't think I'm ever going to really ask you questions about glycogen. That's our stored form of sugar. But, guys, you've got to know your monos versus dyes versus polys. Glucose, mono. Okay, lactose and sucrose, dyes. Cellulose and amylose, polys. Okay, now if we go back to our wicked chart, we almost got everything done except for one. So let's go back to our chart we were making. Where's my chart that I was making? Oh, I lost it. There it is. Okay, shape. It's a ring. Names, os and sacker. Okay, examples. We did glucose for mono, right? We did lactose and sucrose for dyes. We did cellulose and amylose for poly. I would know all of those guys for the test because I might just do a question as simple as true or false. Glucose is a polysaccharide. And the answer is no. He's a monosaccharide. So there's only one box we're missing. We're just missing functions. And you guys are done. So the real question is why do we eat carbohydrates? Why do we eat sugar in the first place? And it's all about this. Okay, you're going to learn this in chapter six more than you ever wanted to know in your lifetime. Okay, the reason why we eat this more than anything else is for the following reason. We eat carbohydrates because carbohydrates provide the body. I think it's on one of these slides. Maybe not. I'll have to draw it myself. Oh, I guess we don't. All right. Well, you'll just have to trust me then. The reason why we eat carbohydrates is because of the following. I'm going to kind of make it important. How's this? Is there any questions? Now, the problem that we're going to have is, as humans, we need energy to do all sorts of stuff. And we get energy from many different sources. Fats have a ton of energy in them as well. So what we need to do is we make sure we got to get the right energy for what we need. So in this case, okay, guys, in this case, I want you guys to memorize this with it, if you would. Quick or first. If I'm the mitochondria, which is all chapter six, okay, chapter six. If I say mitochondria, I know what you're saying at home while you're watching this. You're saying powerhouse, okay, which I get. If I'm the mitochondria, I'm going to use carbohydrates as my quickest form of energy, my first form of energy. Now, side note for the next video, fats actually have the most energy. So you got to be careful here, okay? But if I'm going to play a sport, do I want to eat a greasy cheeseburger right before I run out on the court? No. Fats have the most energy, but man, they're a bugger to get the energy from. It's a lot easier to work with carbohydrates first. So when we go back to our chart, that's the main function of carbohydrates. It's an energy source for me to run my body the way I want to run it. Okay, so guys, let's, I'm feeling pretty good about our chart. So let's go ahead and just make sure we got our chart down done. And then this video is completed. So let's go to our chart. So over here, I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you to write quick. Sorry, I didn't switch my marker. Energy. And then you got your chart there. Now you guys got to remember, I'm going to try to screw you up. I'm going to try to say true or false. Glucose is a protein. Or true or false. Nucleic acids are my quickest form of energy. I'm going to try to take this chart and I'm going to mess it up something fierce. So do me a favor, stick to your guns and really know your carbohydrates and dehydration versus hydrolysis and organic. Sound good? All right. Thanks, guys. That's your video on carbohydrates. Another one coming right up. Thanks for watching. See you on the flip side.